Hello there, my green-skinned friends, and welcome to another lore episode where we talk about a couple of aspects of Orc society. In today's video, I wanted to go over a rather significant aspect of said Orc society, this being their twin main deities, the Rockus, Gork and Morg. I would also like to make a short overview of how tribes and clans work in the Orc world. I am your usual host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see who the Greenskins worship, shall we? The Orcs are a powerful force in the universe. They are a highly prolific race, being able to expand and prosper effortlessly in comparison to other civilizations who simply struggle to survive. The Orc character traits have a reflection in the warp just like the impulses and emotions of humanity and the Eldar. These traits are made manifest in the belligerent Orc deities known as Gork and Morg. Gork and Morg are divine powerhouses, gods which are so strong that they are never really defeated. They simply shrug off the attacks of other gods with a raucous laughter. Gork grins, bares his long teeth, and lands a mighty blow on his adversary's head with a spiked club the size of a comet. Mork, always the sneaky one, waits until the foe isn't looking before clobbering him with a low blow. An idea of the appearance of the orc gods can be gained from looking at orc gargons and stompas, mighty war machines constructed in the very image of Gork, or possibly Mork. The mechboys create these titanic engines of war to reflect the essence of orkiness in mechanical form, and as such they serve as potent religious idols. To the orcs, these clanking behemoths behave very much like their gods, lumbering about and leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. They go where they please, and never run away from a new fight. The aspects of Gork and Mork are likewise evoked by the Gorkonaut and Morkonaut. These huge, armored warsuits are intended as a tribute to the imitation of their chosen god all in one, and their pilots are frequently gripped by visions of Gork, or possibly Mork, urging them on during the heat of battle. As the apocalyptic designs of the Chaos Gods approach fruition, the immaterial realm is roused in ever greater fury. So it is that Gork and Mork fight all the harder against the demonic tides washing about their feet. The Orc God's joyful battle lust echoes into the material universe, their roars more clear to the Greenskins with every passing day. The Weird Boys claim that Gork and Mork are calling all their children to the last mighty battle, for the Great Wa, the Everlasting War, is upon them. The priesthood of these gods has no really clear representation. Although the infamous Goths warlord Gazgul Mag Uruk Fraka claims to be receiving visions from both. Also, there has been some mention of Yellers, which are the orc versions of a priest, although they have never been seen. Supposedly, in earlier versions of Warhammer 40k, there was a third god called Bork but that has been since dropped from the lore. Orcs generally tend to distinguish between Gork and Mork as one being mean and the other being cunning. Some religious divisions lie in determining who is meaner, just one more factor preventing Orcs from being united. It is doubtful that the distinction between Gork and Mork means anything in Orc culture, as long as it allows them to bash something. Perhaps Gork and Mork are actually just one god with two faces, the twin halves of the Orc psyche. The Orc race's collective unconsciousness does register in the Immaterium, much as do the collective psyches of other races. In the Orc's case, their relatively simplistic psyches coalesce into two simplistic entities that they worship as Gork and Mork, who are much like the Chaos Gods, the Lost Eldar Gods, or the Emperor of Mankind's empowered soul within the Warp. The difference between the two greenskin gods is simple. Gork is brutal but cunning, while Mork is cunning but brutal. To make this comprehensible, one has to think like an orc. Mork hits you when you aren't looking, and Gork hits you hard when you are. 
The Greenskins believe that when facing the gods of another intelligent race of the galaxy, their deities can be defeated but can never be truly extinguished. Like the orcs themselves, they will always come back, ready and spoiling for a fight. The orcs believe that Gork and Mork are personal gods, as in they will offer aid to those orcs who ask for it, as long as they are found deserving. However, it doesn't matter which of the two gods an orc prays to, since they are essentially interchangeable. However, if a distinction is to be made, it could be said that Gork is the favored god of the average greenskin, as the manifestation of the physical power which defines the orcs, and Mork, on the other hand, is the favored deity of the odd boys. The cunning orcs who do more than just fighting to keep the orc species moving forward. The greatest of the orc warlords, Gaskul Mag Uruk Fraka, the orc who unleashed both the second war for Armageddon and the even more brutal third war for Armageddon, is currently considered the prophet of Gork and Morg. Gaskul and his orcs believe that the twin gods provide him with the information to unleash strategies that will finally give the orcs victory over the Imperium and all their enemies. These basically include every other thinking being in the Milky Way galaxy. Rumors abound that Gaskul intends to call for Ragnarok, the Great War, the final apocalyptic battle in which the orcs would prove their worth before the eyes of their violent and primitive gods. Though both are warrior gods, Gork is the primary deity of clobbering, smashing, breaking, killing and pummeling the rest of the galaxy into submission. This is a notion that resonates strongly with the more single-minded warbosses of the orc race. Mork, the most cunning god of the orc pantheon, is the patron deity of greenskin thinkers, creators and shamans. Whereas Gork is more likely to clobber an enemy god in the face, Mork will happily wait until his enemy's back is turned before raising his club and belting him around the back of the head. It is Mork who is revered by the stranger and arguably the more intelligent strains of orcs. Commandos, weird boys, mech boys, and those rare war bosses who like to have a good hard think about their battle plans before going to war. The orcs, as you have already learned, are an incredibly anarchic race. Their armies and settlements seem utterly disorganized to outside eyes. Yet in truth, orc society is governed by a rugged set of tried and tested traditions that no greenskin would ever think of changing. Orcs thrive on conflict. The strongest rise to the top, while the weak become subservient and benefit from the superior leadership and head-kicking skills of their conquerors. To an orc, this state of affairs is perfectly satisfactory. If an orc tribe is beaten by another, stronger tribe, the defeated orcs welcome the opportunity to be led into battle by a new warlord of even greater power. A tribe is simply all the orcs in a given location, regardless of what cult or clan they may belong to. Because in the end, an orc is an orc, and they will always put aside their differences, at least temporarily, if there is an opportunity to attack a common foe. Each tribe is led by a warlord, whose authority and power holds his loose confederation in check and prevents civil war between the rival elements of the tribe. Tribes can vary in size from a few hundred orcs to a few million, depending on the influence of the war leader at the top of the pile. Because a warlord cannot be everywhere at once, the tribes are split into warbands that in turn are led by factional leaders called warbosses. Each warboss leads a warband of a hundred or so orcs, forming a rough and ready army that is capable of taking on almost any foe. Most warbands have a hard core of orc boy infantry at their heart, but beyond that they can vary enormously from one to the next. Like-minded orcs tend to cluster together, leading to warbands crammed with mechanized speed freaks or pyromaniac burna boys. The warboss's preference can also dictate how their warband looks and fights, some favoring masses of charging boys and hulking knobs, while others prefer to ride to battle aboard columns of ragged armored vehicles, or packing batteries of massive shooters and artillery. 
Although all orcs belong to a tribe, most also belong to clans, such as Goths or Evil Sons. Tribes are constantly breaking apart and reforming in the crucible of battle, but the clans are constant and enduring. A big tribe usually contains many different clans, and each clan has its own distinct character and identity. There are six clans in particular that have spread from one side of the galaxy to the other. The Goths, the Snake Bites, the Bad Moons, the Blood Axes, the Death Skulls, and the Evil Sons. Most warbands will contain representatives from at least one of these clans, each of which has distinct cultural preferences, traits, and specialties. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Gork and Mork, and how the tribes and clans of the orcs work on a general level. It probably doesn't need to be said, as by now you know I'm pretty thorough, but I will of course make videos on each of the great clans in the future. Do you like Gork, or possibly Mork? Would you favor them above other 40k deities? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.